Hi everyone, this is Joe from InnerGeeks.com and this little nondescript box you see before you is actually something very cool. I'm going to open it right here on camera. It is a 1961 Dick Tracy Crime Stoppers Club kit. Uh, it was a kit that you could send away for from Tribune Media. Uh, it used to be called something else back then. The Chicago Tribune basically was the newspaper that owned Dick Tracy. They made these little kits to send out and this one is in absolutely mint condition mainly because of a recent warehouse find where they found a bunch of them that had not been sent out in a box in cases and they were in mint condition. Now this is good for collectors because you can get one at a reasonable price but it's also bad for collectors in that so many of them are now available in mint condition that the price or the value rather goes down. So I'm going to open this right on camera. We're going to pretend that this mailer box had a little label on front with my address and Tribune Media in the corner and I sent away to the Chicago Tribune and waited four to six weeks for it to arrive and here it is. So I am going to crack the seal on this box from 1961 very carefully I might add. I'm also doing this on camera to prove that this is what it is because if you collect these and keep them in the box, well there's nothing on the outside of the box if it were not mailed to tell you what's inside. So this way we actually have a record of what is inside and this is indeed the box it came from. I'm going to find the seam of the box here and very carefully because there are paper products inside as well as some other fun stuff. I already know the contents but I'm going to share it with you as we go and there we go. We just cracked it open and inside oh doesn't this look fun. So I have a few things here. We have the Dick Tracy Secret Code Maker. We have a Dick Tracy Crime Stoppers wallet with an ID card inside. In this little paper packet here, we're gonna be very careful. There's a little bit of discoloration, obviously, on the top that was closest to the, uh, closest to the outside of the box. So wrapped up in this tissue paper, we're gonna find some fun things here. Oh, now that's a little bit, well, I'm guessing that is rust because there is something in here that would contain metal. We're going to see what kind of condition it's in. After being stored for, oh gosh, what, 50, 60 years, one can expect a little bit of problems just from the fact that it has existed for that long, even though it was preserved in its original mailer box. The tissue's tearing just a little bit here. Oh, I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to come out okay. A little bit more. Aha, uh -huh, we've reached the center. So let me just grab right here. Now, right, the first thing I see is one of the coolest things. This is actually a metal pin badge that actually is molded with the Dick Tracy Crime Stoppers logo and Dick Tracy's uh, profile right there. We have a nondescript plastic magnifying glass that you would like you would find in a, a bag of party favors. We have this device right here, which I think I, think I know what's causing the issue here. It's stuck to it. Let me grab the whistle first. We also have a, a, a basic whistle. There's no particular imprint on this. It's just a plastic molded two-tone whistle, two-color whistle. It only plays one tone. It is the P variety. The P is still inside. I'm sure it works just fine. But there are two items here. Well, they are stuck together mainly because this... I hope I can separate these without any major problems. Oh, boy. Yeah. I'm going to have to do a little cleanup on this. So what we have here, this, <laughs> let's go to this first. This is actually a flashlight that works really neat. Now, it, I don't think it, I don't know if it has a battery in it or not. Obviously, the battery would not work after all this time. But as you press down on the switch, the little lid flips open. The bulb, the incandescent bulb is inside there, which would light up and automatically close to cover it. Uh, I will check this in a little bit to see if there's a battery inside and if it can be replaced. It looks like it might use a AAA battery. So flashlight, magnifying glass, badge and whistle, all of the things that you would need to be a Dick Tracy Crime Stopper. Plus, this little problem child here, this was the stamp pad for making fingerprints. Now, as you can see, it has leaked out one side. Most of the times, these have just dried up to the point where they're not a problem. This one, this ink that has linked out the side is, is still very gooey and it has gotten all over the uh, the little flip lid of the uh, of the flashlight here. So I'm gonna try to clean that off. Um, these are usually a complete loss. In fact, I can't even open it. The, the ink has sealed 
the little container shut. So that, I will try to clean up. Hopefully that's water soluble ink. I can clean that up and at least get it back to a presentable condition. We'll set that aside for now. Now in addition, oh, let's look at the code maker uh, really quick here. This is a lot of fun. This is something that's, uh, I guess, similar to the uh, Little Orphan Annie decoder ring that we saw in um, uh, the movie A Christmas Story, where Ralphie gets that and is disappointed by the fact that it's just an advertisement. The secret message is just an advertisement. This is actually printed with a series of letters and numbers. The middle part slides back and forth so that you can line up the letters and numbers to make different series of codes. In order to decode your message, someone would have to know how this is actually lined up. And this is in beautiful, perfect shape, all wood, imprinted. It does say Dick Tracy on it, which is nice because some of these items are rather nondescript as far as their, their recognizability. Uh, it does say patents pending. I don't know if that patent was ever actually granted. <laughs> it comes with a sheet of paper. Paper's a little discolored, the part that was laying against the wood. This is also very dry paper. I'm going to try to very carefully unfold it just a little bit here because it will actually tell you. We'll just go right here because you can actually tell you combinations of letters that you can use and how to use the code maker to write secret messages and have them decoded by the person who receives them, assuming they also have a Dick Tracy Crime Stoppers kit. Now, in the bottom here, we have some nice paper items, the first of which is a little pad of Crime Stoppers textbook pages. Now, if you read Dick Tracy, I'm a big fan of Dick Tracy, the comic strip in particular, because it's been running for a very long time, still runs to this day, and is better than ever in the hands of, um, of uh, Joe Stanton and Mike Curtis and, and that crew. It was originally created by Chester Gould in the early 30s, or mid-30s, I think. I'm thinking 1936. I may or may not be accurate on that. But on the Sunday... Uh, comic strips, the first panel would be something like this, a Crime Stoppers textbook that would give you some advice to uh, thwart criminals. And we have a whole pad of them here. Each one is a, oh, they're coming off there. Each one's a little, each one is different. Uh, they always depicted themselves to be able to be cut out and punch two holes in the side and put them in a little binder uh, of some kind, which I don't know if such a thing exists, but those are certainly, there are certainly several of them here. I don't know how many sheets, but there's four to a page. So there's a Crime Stoppers textbook then we have a 5x7 uh, photograph, quote unquote, of Dick Tracy. Now this was released uh, to coincide with the, the early 60s uh, Dick Tracy animated TV show, the cartoon show that was shown on television. And um, so this depicts Dick Tracy and one of his uh, politically incorrect cohorts, Joe Jitsu. A very formulaic show, a series of short cartoons that featured actual villains uh, from the comic strip, like uh, Flat Top and Prune Face and all that. Uh, the show was very formulaic in that it always started with Dick Tracy uh, talking into his wrist radio, uh, calling one of his cohorts, uh, Joe Jitsu, uh, Go Go Gomez, or Hemlock Holmes to go take care of the criminals, which they did, and then Dick Tracy shows up at the end of each episode to uh, take credit. <laughs> so that was basically every episode of the Dick Tracy show. Um, his cohorts were not exactly uh, uh, politically correct, racially sensitive. We have Joe Jitsu, who is obviously Japanese. Uh, Gogo Gomez was not only Mexican, he was a direct ripoff of Speedy Gonzalez uh, to a T, except he was human. Hemlock Holmes was an English bulldog that was also a Bobby. So uh, uh, you can catch this. The entire set is on DVD. If you ever want to see these, they're, they're kind of fun to watch. So we have a nice little photograph here. Uh, this is very cool. This is actually a uh, fingerprint identification. This is actually a booking sheet, basically, for your friends. So you put their photo of the perpetrator here, describe them here, their uh, age, height, weight, sex, hair, eyes, scars, birthmarks, etc. And, of course, with our uh, unfortunately leaking and disgusting stamp pad, assuming it was good at the time, you could actually get their fingerprints on file. There was a sheet of about 20 of these so that you could incarcerate your friends. What fun, what fun. Now this is the best thing of all. This is actually a sheet of court orders. Yes, summons. You can actually cite your friends for violations of the law. There's plenty of information to fill out. And check these out. Here's the list of violations uh, of a lot of things that kids got into at the time and certainly still get into. Under safety, we have darting into the street from between parked cars. Definitely not right. Jaywalking, crossing against lights, and unsafe use of fire. Oh, those little pyromaniacs. 
Under cycling, we have reckless cycling, unlit bicycle at night, and cycling on the wrong side of the road. Yes, you can pull them over and issue them a citation. <laughs> These were so much fun. Under miscellaneous, let's see, we have uh, defacing property, littering, unnecessary noise, creating disturbance. Uh, unnecessary noise. That's more of a parent thing. I think the parents would cite the kids for that more than kids citing other kids. Uh, petty larceny. Oh, we're getting bigger here. Uh, bullying youngsters. Cruelty to animals. Oh gosh, we're entering a possible felony area here. And causing a public hazard. These are so much fun. What other, what other uh, police kit have I ever seen in my life that had subpoenas that you could actually issue? <laughs> a court orders to issue to your friends. This is so much fun. Uh, this is the only thing like that that I have seen. This is a, this is a great little kit. I can imagine kids got a big kick out of this at the time. Uh, of course, the uh, uh, finding these loose and in good condition is difficult because obviously the the fingerprint sheets would have all been used. The summonses, uh, the the ID card that comes with the wallet would have immediately had the kid's name written in there. And some people prefer to have them like that. I can understand that. If you have one of these that has been played with, there's there's some charm to that. There's something that, it's like a little bit of history. You know that a kid played with it and enjoyed it. So so I can understand you wanting to have one like that. Or if you still have yours from when you were a kid, by gosh, let me know. Post it in the comments. I would love to see that. And um, like I say, some of the items like the whistle and the magnifying glass are nothing special. They're just from the same molds. These molds are probably being used today to make these very items. The badge is definitely the coolest because it's made from a very heavy metal, probably pot metal. Uh, it does have a working pin on the back, and it is actually sculpted and molded with Dick Tracy's likeness, and it says Dick Tracy Crime Stoppers molded in. It's not something that's simply printed. It's something that took a little more effort on the manufacturer's part, so that is probably the best piece uh, to find separate from this kit. And, uh, and of course, the, the next best thing, or certainly the, uh, I may try to unfold this page a little more and figure it out. The, uh, the code maker is such a neat little wooden piece that's specially made just for this. So, so there you have it, the 1961 Tribune Media Dick Tracy Crime Stoppers kit from a warehouse find in magnanimous shape. And you can find them on eBay for between $30 and $50, which I think is very reasonable. And uh, uh, again, the only problem you might have is that the ink pad might be like this one. <laughs> but I'm gonna try to clean this up, I think, it should not be a problem to clean all of this up and, and get it in really nice shape. And then I'm gonna to try to probably frame it, letter bo or a, a shadow box it, something like that. So, uh, and there you have it, the Dick Tracy Crime Stoppers kit. Thanks for watching.